Thank you, Hina, for your kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is, as Hina mentioned, my name is Chidambaram. I go by Chid. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the manufacturing process and controls, how to avoid major uh, review issues that could potentially end as a deficiency or an approvability issue. My talk is divided into following um, headings. Um, I will provide a brief uh, introduction about our organization because Dr. Kopcha mentioned about it yesterday following the introduction. I'll also talk about the role of manufacturing process, how critical it is um, for a drug product and the common major deficiencies that we have seen to date uh, with a, a few case studies. And I will conclude my presentation and recommendations um, for you to consider when you submit your application. Uh, before I go to that, I would like to know by a show of hands, how many of you are chemists in this audience and how many of you are from regulatory affairs? Chemists first, please. Okay. And regulatory affairs looks like rest of us. Okay. Great majority of So I can tailor my talk to the presentation, to the needs. Okay. Um, as you know, in early 2000, our center director enunciated her vision for the pharmaceutical, under the pharmaceutical quality initiative for the 21st century, wherein she uh, desired a maximally efficient, agile, flexible pharmaceutical manufacturing sector that reliably produces high quality drugs without extensive regulatory oversight. I would like to highlight a few words here, agility, flexibility, reliability. Those are the key words. So, and this is a desired state. We are getting there. And we have seen a lot of changes, a lot of improvements since the time uh, this came out. Um, of course, I don't want to go into this much because Dr. Kapcha mentioned yesterday. I want to highlight one thing about our vision, OPQ. Because Dr. Kapcha mentioned that OPQ stood up about a little over two years ago. And our vision is to be the global benchmark for pharmaceutical quality. Uh, regulation and also how we do that because we do that we means at the component offices that comprise OPQ by one quality voice that's our slogan our recommendation our conclusions will be under one voice this is just an organizational structure which Dr. Kopcha mentioned again last yesterday I come from the, the right bottom box office of process and facilities what do we do in the Office of Process and Facilities? As you know, we get to touch all the applications, whether it is new drug application or generic drug applications. We, our reviewers, get to touch and review from a process standpoint, manufacturing process controls, from microbiology, which my colleague will be talking about later this afternoon, and also from the inspection assessment standpoint. So uh, we work with the new drugs for IND, NDAs, pre-IND, um, pre-NDA end of phase two meeting where uh, manufacturing process controls information is provided where they need our input and with the office of life cycle drug products uh, for the and applications that uh, you all know you will be submitting or you have submitted before and um, our uh, division of inspection assessment works with the office of compliance and uh, regulatory affairs where uh, we send our subject matter experts to accompany the investigator while inspe inspecting the manufacturing facility. We also uh, work with the Office of Biotechnology Products to review uh, their unique special products. Uh, we talked about product quality. What is product quality and how does it link to the patient? Let's take a look at it. Quality, uh, expectations for quality is different for different individuals. For the caregivers and patients, Product quality is the one that is safe. The product here is a drug product that's safe and efficacious and has the correct identity. And it will deliver the same performance as provided in the label. And it will perform consistently throughout the shelf life, whether it is freshly manufactured or at the end of shelf life. And it's made in a manner consistently and reproducibly. And it's also available when it is needed. I'd like to emphasize it's available when it's needed because when the drug is not available, it's in shortage. We don't want that. So in essence, the drug has to be safe, efficacious, uh, should perform as provided on the label, and it should be available when needed. So how is the process tied to the patient? 
process is an essential part that is need to be controlled to manufacture a product with the desired um, dosage form irrespective of whether it is an immediate release or an extended release or a patch or a sterile solution. There are some critical elements needed, critical product attribute material that go into manufacture needs to be controlled and um, the critical, the intermediates will have some critical quality attributes and the final product also has desired some product profile like an immediate release product as to perform in such a way which is different from the extended release product and and it's also like for transdermal patches which has a unique product characteristic. So as far as the patient is concerned, they look at only the product. So the, the, for the product to be manufactured, the material attributes, the in-process controls all have to be in place to consistently and reproducibly manufacture a quality product. Let's look at the common major deficiencies that we have seen so far. And I will highlight a few of them in my case studies following which. The first one is a morphic form uh, for the drug substance, which my colleague um, uh, Dr. Lin talked about it, how important it is to control the morphic form of the drug substance um, and its impact on the drug product uh, CQAs. When a new source of API is submitted in an amendment, that also Dr. Sun talked about it because we don't want to see a new source of API because we, I will summarize in the end our expectations, what are the things that we expect from you for a complete submission. Uh, when we have also seen uh, sometimes in the application where the excipient interacts with the API and also one of the requirements is to use for generic drugs is to use two lots of API to manufacture three uh, drug product batches and what is it if it deviates from this requirement. And when there is a significant differences information provided in module 2 and module 3, um, and also differences in the process description, in process controls and scale up information. Um, inclusion of a new drug product strength in an amended application. As you know, say for example, an RLD has six strengths an A and D applicant decided to manufacture and submit only three strengths out of six. But during review of your application and we get an either a solicit, uh, unsolicited amendment or in response to an IR deficiency, additional strengths. So when the applicant has a second thought, they decided to manufacture the other three strengths and submit that information in amendment. As you know, that uh, puts a lot of pressure on the reviewer because we are working within a timeline. Now GEDUFA 1 and GEDUFA 2 is going to come uh, starting October. So we have our timelines, review timelines, not only review facility. So when you have new strands, the reviewer has to totally review the other information that's additionally submitted. And also uh, the biofarm reviewer need to look at the new strands too. So it puts a lot of stress for us. Some of the critical uh, process parameters are indicated to be determined uh, during process validation. This we have seen uh, quite a few applications. Certainly our expectation is that you have um, fine-tuned all your critical process parameters for both the exhibit as well as the commercial batches when you submit your application. We have also seen some data integrity issues with respect to stability and uh, scale-up uh, dissolution failure during scale-up and change in the dissolution acceptance criteria for an extended release product. Manufacturing site change, uh, Dr. Sun talked about it, how it affects when it is changed during review, change in the granulation process. So whatever be the process, you finalize before you embark on your manufacturing exhibit and commercial batches. And the differences in manufacturing process proposed for exhibit and commercial batches. And uh, scale dependent critical process parameters are not adequately justified. We are not asking you not to do whatever you do. If there are any differences, please provide justification. And use of excess overage. Uh, depending on the dosage form, overage is, overage is allowed, but what, and you need to provide justification why you need to have that overage. Um, let's look at the case study one. 
when there is a change in morphic form for the drug substance and how it impacts the drug product critical quality attributes. Um, uh, in a combination drug product uh, where there are two APIs, they had the uh, applicant has determined the uh, determined uh, the wet granulation as a manufacturing process and also one of the API is slightly sensitive to moisture. So during development they had used minimum quantity of water for this wet granulation because it's a wet granulation and uh, the end point was an attainment of the amperage but it so happened that the operator decided to hasten the process and add a little bit more water and increase the granulation time. The product that they obtained uh, failed dissolution, even stage 3 dissolution. So the result is that they had to discard number of lots. So certainly whatever process that you had finalized, stick to it. Please do not change. You establish your design space and operating space and operate within that, prove the ranges. Um, and uh, also spectroscopic methods um, should be such that you should be able to prove that the, there is no change to the morphic form from manufacture, storage, throughout the end of shelf life. And the analytical method that you determine should be capable to uh, determine that suitability. Using two lots of uh, API to manufacture three exhibit batches, it's required by the stability guidance. If this requirement is not met and uh, you decide to go back and manufacture additional API, you need to establish comparability and if there are um, increase in uh, degradation products or impurities and if there are failures, that will complicate um, the review of the application. And also, um, if there are stability failures for the new batches that are manufactured using the new API. So it's good to start with the required, uh, whatever the requirements are and go from there. And as you know, um, any changes or any additional information that you submit puts um, strain to our resources. Already we are stretched thin because the volume of ANDAs are quite high. So certainly, please be cognizant of that and plan your process before and complete a, uh, submit a complete application. Change in the dissolution acceptance criteria for an extended release product. A case in point is like uh, you have established a coating process for the extended release layer uh, for the exhibit batch. And if you were to change when you scale up, resulting in uh, thicker uh, coating of the extended, extended release layer or the non-functional coating, that will change the dissolution profile and you need to adjust your acceptance criteria. And you need to manufacture new batches, you need to establish comparability with already manufactured batches. Certainly um, recognize that and fine tune your manufacturing process, establish adequate controls to have a uniform coating thickness for both the exhibit as well as commercial batches. Change in the granulation process. We have seen a couple of examples like um, initially you decided to go with a dry granulation, but then later you decided to go change it to a wet granulation. So decide on the process and if there is a change, provide justification why you have to change and also propose a risk mitigation strategy. If there were to be any risk, how would you mitigate that? The final case study is uh, the master batch record. We have seen differences in uh, the executed batch record and the commercial batch record, uh, especially with respect to uh, variation in equipment uh, percent utilization. In the exhibit batch, the equipment, 60 percent of the equipment was utilized whereas for the commercial batch is 80 percent. So try to uh, synchronize your exhibit batch as well as commercial batch such that there are no major differences which would affect your final product quality. And if there is a low yield, provide justification. It's not the end of all. Provide a reasonable justification that a reviewer can understand why, what is the reason for the low yield. And if you have to hold 
your either your intermediate or your final uh, drug product provide uh, data supportive data like if you want to hold your product for 60 days provide data so that there is no change to your either intermediate or the finished product such that that will satisfy the reviewer because ultimately we are working towards to ensure that the product quality is good that the american public is consuming is good for them uh, in summary i would like to conclude by saying that and ask you to develop a thorough product and process understanding establish adequate in process controls material controls critical process parameters establish a design and operating space prove that that if there is any movement between the design and operating ranges there is not nothing to worry about it so and provide that information the application and if there are any differences justify and uh, provide all required information and supportive data in your application and uh, it's good for you and good for us when you submit a complete comprehensive application where uh, we look forward to providing you the first cycle approval as dr wool said get it first time right first time thank you for your attention